sport has always thrived on the battle between two teams, the home side and the visiting side. One is backed by a proud local crowd. The other has to put aside feelings of intimidation. NZ World Series Sprint Cars operates off this same ideal, home versus away. Only instead of just one home team, there are plenty. A posse of local racers who know the lay of the clay better than anyone. The away team, on the other hand, is the series itself containing the hired guns who roll from town to town, squaring off against the locals on their turf. Home wins are few and far between, but not at this place. In this town, domestic racing is the toughest in the country. As a matter of fact, New South Wales racers have combined to win half of the World Series events held here at their home track since it all started 26 years ago. The place these racers call home is Sydney Speedway, located in the western suburbs of Parramatta. It's 460 metres long and has good banking in the corners, which means fast racing and plenty of passing. It's the perfect location to continue our championship story. Defending champ James McFadden is on a hat-trick of wins, and he now has a strong points lead over the South Aussie duo of Luke Dillon and Stephen Lyons. But form may have to give way to history, as McFadden has never won at this track before. And you better believe that the local crew, plus the usual American onslaught, are damn keen on keeping it that way. So whose side are you on as NZ World Series Sprint Cars, presented by Hogsbreath Cafe, returns to Sydney, home or away? It's been two long years since NZ World Series Sprint Cars have raced here in Sydney, but it is finally back. To me, it feels a bit like having the Ashes in England and not going to Lords. You've got to have the premier Sprint Car Series racing in Sydney and at this beautiful 36-year-old racetrack here in Parramatta. The big talking topic this weekend has been the weather. Now, I can't tell exactly how hot it has been today, but it's been closer to 50 degrees than it has 40 degrees. What that means exactly is that this track is just going to burn away. By the end of this race meeting, it's going to be very, very tough on tyres. This is the seventh round of the championship already. Can you believe it? So let's check out how the points tally is looking. McFadden's been Mc unstoppable at the minute. He is absolutely on a roll, on a hat-trick as we said earlier after wins in Warrnambool and Brisbane looking to bring that success down to Sydney. Luke Dillon's still very much in the hunt at the minute along with Stephen Lyons, but I tell you what, if they don't start converting wins here this weekend, this championship could well and truly slip away. Look at the list of Americans below them as well. Speaking of Americans, we get to add yet another massive name to the list of Yanks who have raced in a World Series this year, the number nine Hogsbreath car of Joey Saldana. Yep, he's on track here this weekend. He's so, so successful at Sydney Speedway. He's just another guy to watch in this impressive build. We have over 50 cars nominated here this weekend, so just making that A-main of 20 drivers is going to be a task. So here we go, qualifying now, highlights thereof as we see young Jackson Delamont on the racetrack. Stephen Lyons in the Halls Motorsport entry. A lot of Sydney siders hoping to step up, that was one of them then, Warren Ferguson. And American Jason Sides comes in here as a real live wire. And this track is extremely wet. Parramatta, it's a cool little speedway. It doesn't have walls on the outside, so you can really push it to the limit and run it over the edge. Sean Bradford will do that, but nobody did it better than Shane Stewart. He sets quick time. Well, this one's been a long time coming. I'm very happy to give this man, Shane Stewart, our quick time award of the night. Dude, if there's one emotion that you're feeling right now, I'd imagine it's relief. Uh, big time relief. You know, just a testament to the guys behind me. Uh, they worked really, really hard. It's our third car um, that they've built for me, and, and we've been struggling, and we shouldn't have. Um, this team's capable of winning, winning these races and, and definitely finishing on the podium. And, just uh, can't say thank you enough to, to all them guys. They've been working really hard for me. And, and I've got some monster, monster uh, employees here from the U.S. and, and uh, really proud that they were able to make it. And 
got uh, some guys from Milwaukee Power Tools here too tonight. So just a good start to the night. Um, got a few, uh, got, got a little bit of work left to do and, and hopefully we can have a good showing. Yeah, let's hope he can, in fact, do just that. Shane Stewart's quickest. Well done, Roddy Bell Bowen, a Sydney specialist. James McFadden, third quick, quashing the rumour that he's not real good around this place. He doesn't do a lot of racing here. Robbie Fast, Stephen Lyons, Luke Dillon, TK, Gary Brazier, Ben Atkinson, and well done, Matthew Smith, the young Nova Castrian, outstanding in a speed car and a sprint car. He rounds out your top ten for Revolution Race Gear qualifying. And let's take a look at heats on night number one. Very busy racetrack. It was heavy early. American Jason Sides out of Tennessee. A World of Outlaws superstar working Luke Dillon. And this is racy. There's always two lines at Parramatta. There is. It's a great little racetrack. You can see how heavy it was early in the night. A lot of mud coming up off the tyres there. As we see, Trent picked and come a grief and he stopped on the outside. There's plenty of room to run wide and go after it. Jeremy Cross and Max Johnston, youngster out of Camden. Just see then Jordan Brazier turning the car and getting tagged. He spins the number 21. Sean Bradford was lively at this place. Dan Needham, young Sydney sider, comes up a bit stiff here. Ends up with a bit of an injury as he goes in here. Car actually pulls up. He saw he had some dramas just there in that new on number 95. He was okay later, but it robbed him of some good chance to score some points. Your four heat race winners. There are only four heats on the night. David Blingy Muir scored a good win. American Jason Sides, the ominous Sydney sider. Damien Abbott doing very well. And South Aussie Daniel Pesca starting to get a handle on a place he had certainly never, ever been to. His rapid improvement continues through the ranks. Coming up after the break, it's preliminary A main time at Sydney Speedway for the NZ World Series Sprint Cars presented by Hogsbreath. your preliminary A main, the first of two nights here at Sydney Speedway for the NZ World Series Sprint Cars presented by Hogs Breath Cafe. No less, Jack Perkins, than seven Americans in this field. Yeah, great to see the Americans here. Jason Johnson will start off the pole with a, a fellow American, Jason Sides, next to him. Local runner, Roddy Balboa, and a young bloke I used to race against in carts. Good to see him, a local kid doing a good job. Shane Stewart, Benny Atkinson, Kyle Hurst, Tim Koenig, James McFadden, Matthew Smith, nice job job by this youngster out of the Newcastle area. Time to get after it. Your preliminary A main night one of two as Dylan tries to press the issue on the inside with Stephen Lyons and that's Ian Madsen to the outside in that red and white number 11. Oh man, one of the best guys around Sydney Speedway is Ian Madsen. It's all happening here as you can see the jostling for position with a couple of guys running wide there but all pretty clean to start this feature race. The two sevens, Roddy Bell Bowen and the all black number seven and Shane Stewart, the man who set quick time in our Rebel Revolution Race Gear qualifying. You can see how wide this racetrack is, Jack. You've got a bottom groove down there. Wow! Which Shane Stewart was keen to get to. And then you've got a nice, big, fat, juicy cushion up high to lean on. Exactly, and it's not like a lot of the tracks we've had so far on the World Series where the, the edge of the track is the concrete walls. There's a bit of runoff over the top, so to get right up on the cushion gives you a lot more confidence to know you're not going to taste concrete if it gets all wrong. There is Brooke Tatnell in the Steve Court Racing number 25. Three wide out of turn two. Kading on the inside. Dylan, oh, that was closest. And oh, Kading! He all but tipped that thing on its lid. Let's look at it here. It gets cramped up for room. The car tightens up, and that's called a bicycle or a bike. And loads of experience will get you through a situation like that, Jack. It is, and that's a great injectors online.com replay. Really shows that level of the cushion. It's real stacked up high. When you get on the wrong side, it's very evil to ride. Back to the front there, we see Roddy Balboa edged in front of James McFadden. Trevor Green too, he's a former track champion around here, Jack. He knows his way around. He loves to use the bottom to lethal effect in that Nat Rad number four. See Brooke Tattnall, Stephen Lyons, Luke Dillon going by. Then you've got Madsen just ahead there. You've also got Darren Pippen on the bottom and young Matt Smith on the outside as well. Here's Ian Madsen, second generation racer, the younger brother of Kerry. His dad Joe was a gas him up racer back in New Zealand as well. James McFadden carrying the number one and desperately trying to keep his point situation alive. 
Great to watch Ian Madsen. Him and his brother are both impressive to watch. Good to see him out here tonight. Jason Sides chasing down Jason Johnson. Here comes the battle now. Oh, Johnson, super sideways. He lost a ton of ground and Sides is using the bottom. He hails from Memphis in Tennessee and he's looking to be the king here tonight, baby. We saw Jason Johnson get in a little high, which enabled him to sneak back down the bottom and cover that line off to the sides racing up behind him. He call him double down, Jason Sides and the raging Cajun Jason Johnson. So it's a pair of racing Jasons trying to stay out in front. Look at Stewart as well. The Americans are one, two and three right now. It's impressive stuff and really one of those tracks that takes a lot of experience to get right and the Americans are really showing why they're the best in the world at the moment. Sides, oh, he had a bit of a look and he had to get right off the gas then to avoid drifting up into Johnson's path. So Jason Johnson in that white and blue number 47 out of Louisiana, right on the cushion, right up on the high side. He looks good now. That's impressive to watch. You can see him just sits the right rear up in the cushion, drives flat out around the top and he passed the two lap traffic on the inside. And now he's got a bit of breathing space to sides there as he navigates his way through Daniel Pesca, who wouldn't be enjoying getting lapped, but this is his first time here gathering plenty of experience. Roddy Bell Bowen doing a sensational job. There he is scooting by the only Sydney sider in the top five amongst a sea of internationals and the Australian champion. Very handy little racer around this place is Roddy Bell Bowen. Has a SpongeBob SquarePants helmet. You can just see it just there. Designed it himself. He's very handy with graphics and artwork for race cars and helmets. Working the bottom now on James McFadden. Good drive for the number seven, Roddy Bell Bowen. They're having a good dice, these two. You can really show how the racetrack is really racy. The top's working, the bottom's working. It enables some great racing, a lot of passing. So let's see if it continues for next tomorrow night's feature race. Look at this, good racing. Now Brooke Tatnell gets in there as well. Here comes Tatnell. He's got 25 on the top wing, signifying 25 years as a sprint car driver. In that number nine, he gets McFadden, and Brooke will be loving that. Yeah, that's a great little testament to Brooke. Been around for 25 years, one of Australia's best sprint car drivers. Great to see him out here running competitive tonight. Look at J-Mac. He calls him Jay Flap. They have quite a fun rivalry, those two. James calls him the old man. He just rails back on the outside. If there's one car Brooke wants to beat here tonight, you can bet it's James McFadden. Look at this now. On the outside of the fruit wheels, number 32 of Warren Ferguson. And now Sides is back for the challenge for the lead again. He can't get it done and has to check up. Well, these two are racing really hard. Sides looks like he's got a little bit of pace on Johnson. He looked for the move then and lost a lot of ground. And Jason's getting held up a little bit there from the lap traffic. Let's see what happens on the final lap. Gee, only one lap to go. Johnson on the bottom. Sides on the outside. It's starting to get a bit of momentum. Johnson just needs to be very clear here with what he does with the traffic. He goes back upstairs to the cushion. As they come back to the main straight, he bobbles and Sides! Oh, you are kidding me! Sides just pickpocketed Jason Johnson. Yeah, that's a tough way for Johnson to lose that race. As we look now, the injectors online replay, and you see Jason Johnson just got caught up high on the wrong side of the cushion and enabled Jason Sides on the bottom to get a better run of the checkers, and he won the race. Wow, you can never, ever lift off that pedal. Not that Jason Johnson lifted off the pedal. He just didn't get a good run off the corner. Sides, your winner from Johnson, from Stewart, Tattnall. Well done, Roddy Bell Bowen, Kyle Hurst, Pittman. Look at all those Americans. McFadden, Lyons, and Dillon rounding out your top 10. Tim Cady back in 12th, Gary Brazier in 15th, Benny Atkinson in 16th. A lot of guys struggling tonight. We want to step it up tomorrow night. That was your NZ preliminary A-Main. Down from the top wing, a sip of illuminated water. And boy, oh boy, did you leave that one late, Jason Sides. Tell us about that. Well, it's better late than ever. We just kept trying to work the bottom. And, uh, you know, the, I know that around the top down there, it got really sketchy and it was got a big, big ass curve. And, you know, I just wanted to keep on the bottom. And uh, I saw he made a mistake or two, and uh, just one of those things where we just kept plugging away, plugging away, and here we are. Well, here he is indeed. How would Jason Johnson be feeling? Had that pretty well shot to bits. His fellow Americans stole it off him. I wonder how Jason's feeling. Chad Nalan is with him right now. Well, Jason, when you rolled into Australia, did the tourism board ever warn you about having your pocket pick? Well, it was just, uh, you know, it was a good hard race, and then that's what you see a lot in the States, you know. Um, Hats off to Fairmount Raceway, they did a good job preparing the racetrack and that's normally what we race on back in the state, so it's familiar territory. He came at you a few times and you closed the door. Talk us through that last corner. Just, um, you know, I was trying to pick lap traffic, you know. Um, I was real tight there in one and two. And, um, I got by one lap car and I went to the bottom and the lap car squeezed me on the bottom, so I felt like I had more momentum up top and there was just the last lap. 
Um, yeah, I went to go around that corner outside and he kind of checked up in the middle and I hesitated because he hesitated and um, I didn't want to get over the curb and the sides were there. You know, um, I left the door wide open and he stuffed it in there and got, got squeaked by. Shane Stewart continues to build momentum in that monster number seven. Another podium result and he's hoping to do a good job tomorrow night as well. Here's Shane with Chad now. Shane Stewart brings home an All-American trifecta. Does this track lend itself to the Americans? Well, you know, it's, it's similar to what we race at home because it's got what we call wing speed. You know, and a lot of tracks over here are small, the flat, and uh, the, the wing doesn't really do the same things to the car as it would on, on like, similar tracks at home. So, you know, it seems like it kind of caters to that a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, the Americans race on more tracks like this than the Australian guys do. So, you know, just, uh, you know, obviously uh, a good run for, for the, the Monster Energy Drink, uh, the Walking Back to this car. We've been struggling really, really bad. And uh, to, to end up on the podium after one of these nights, uh, definitely going in the right direction. Let's take a look at highlights from night number two's heat racing and well you can expect it was going to be elbows up. Unfortunately there were casualties. Ian Madsen was one of them when Ben Atkinson turned the number two and upside down with the Australian wide towing car. He did a good job here to try and get out of the way Jack. Yeah it's tough when you get there and the track's blocked. He tried to go hard right to miss it. Unfortunately the left rear of his car caught the tail end of Benny Atkinson's car and it rolled over and it's done a little bit of damage to the top of that car. The Houdini out of all that was Toby Bilbo and he just somehow squeezed between the two tail tanks. Rinkin involved as well. And there was a fair bit of bump and grind. Someone who was probably not up to par was Joey Saldana running the Hawks Breath Cafe car. Joey was barely sighted the night before and really couldn't get a run going early in the night here either. That's Matt Smith in the Rinkin Racing 74. Lots going on. Let's go down to, to a chat in the pits right now. He might have a bit of an update on how our American friend is doing. Trouble for Joey Saldana, they did some motor damage and missed that round of heats. You can see down in the sump a massive hole from where a Conrad has smashed right against it. It was not what Joey Saldana was looking for. It's been pretty much a terrible weekend for you guys. Yeah, it's been bad. We, uh, we had a nozzle line come off last night and uh, dropped a heat and that pretty much killed us. And then, uh, then we go out again and uh, we were fast in our set of hot laps, but um, we obviously broke a motor. So. Uh, over here, it's hard to really, you know, be prepared to change a motor, and um, it took them a while. We missed our first round of heats, so uh, we got it running, but the second round of heats, the other motor didn't run, so um, looks like our night's over. Well, here's the heat race winners after night number two. Andrew Wright, Toby Bell Bowen, Robbie Farr, Wayne Johnson, Stuart McFadden, Hurst and Tattnall. Robbie Farr's back to his brilliant best tonight, but last night he had a freak incident. He blew a tyre on the car and it absolutely cleaned up an enormous amount of damage. Chad Nalon spoke to him about what happened last night and how it impacted on his whole weekend. Nearly B main time, but the big drama out down here in the pits is Robbie Farr's car is not going to be ready. Robbie, that was no ordinary uh, tyre explosion. It's taken a whole bunch with it. Yeah, we had a slow leak from that yellow on, and we, I knew I was in trouble, just trying to hang on. Hopefully the tyre wasn't going to explode before the end. I think we got about two to go and the tyre exploded. So, um, yeah, that goes from you know, potentially high points to eight in the B, and I don't think we're going to make that with the amount of damage it done. So, yeah, it just took everything when, it, when the tyre blew it. Yeah, the, the, the rear end dug in the ground and tore everything out of it. So, boys are doing the best. We hopefully, hopefully we can get out for it, but I, we've got about three minutes to do about 25 minutes work, so. Now, talk us through this first lap. You started out of the fifth row and got through six of them before you got back to the start line. Awesome stuff. Yeah, with, with this, uh, the format running tonight, it, the, the, the one heat we've got tonight's worth double points, so we knew we had to go and, and make the best of it, and, and that was happening. And, um, just, yeah, I think we had a yellow seven to go, and as soon as we took off, it, you know, it was getting tighter and tighter, and it went, went down enough to it, to it uh, just, yeah, blew apart. So, here's what it is, mate. We're just um, boys that do the best, and it's just gonna completely ruin our weekend, obviously, where if we don't make it out for this B, we're, we're in no man's land for tomorrow. All right, well, Nick Speed and the crew are trying, but it doesn't look good. Coming up after the break, it's open red time for Amadio Wines with Bryony and Tim Cading, and it's B-Main time at Sydney Speedway.
Tim Kading, thanks for taking some time to have a chat with us. Look, it's not uh, Venice Beach in California, but it's the best that we can do. It's, it's definitely comfortable, I know that. How are you enjoying your trip to Australia this time around? It's awesome. Um, you know, the entire Cricky family has taken me, um, taken me under their arm, and mm. we've been out uh, boating, you know, hanging out, had dinner, drinks. Uh, everything's been fun. Big shoes to fill, though. Brooke Tatnell has been synonymous with Cricky Motorsport for almost the last decade. How have you felt coming into that, that team? We struggled the first couple nights racing, and we definitely haven't, you know, it hasn't been bad, but it's, uh, from the last time I was here in 05, uh, everything's kind of changed. You know, a lot of people have stepped up. They spent, you know, good money to get good equipment, and it definitely shows. You know, you got a lot of good talent over here, uh, James McFadden. Um, he's, you know, one of the top guys to beat, so hopefully we can, uh, you know, knock him off his pedestal a little bit and, and definitely try to win a couple races. You won a few races last year. You raced um, some in the World of Outlaws. Yep. I think you won four, four, outlaw four wins feature last races. Year, yep, with the outlaws, so. Tell me a bit about your schedule last year, what you did, where you went. Um, you know, our, our schedule last year was uh, kind of thrown together at the last minute. Um, didn't have it right at the beginning of the year, kind of parted ways with my car owner, Dennis Roth. Uh, he called me up about a week before the first race and said, hey, you got 10 races to show what you can do in a race car. And we went out first night, uh, knocked off an outlaw win, which was awesome in our book, and, you know, yeah. especially in my book. I have not had good success on half miles. Um, you know, came back, we won at Tulare. Uh, within, I think, six races or eight races, we won two outlaw shows. You came out to race in the World of Outlaws show uh, at Sydney Speedway. It's probably one of the tracks you know better than a lot of the ones you're racing on World Series this season. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, we came over in 2003 or 2002 when they had the Outlaws Down Under tour. Um, it was an awesome, op you know, an awesome opportunity for me to come over. We went out. You know, we didn't have the best luck racing, um, but we had a good time. You know, we got invited to come over with you know some of the elite sprint car drivers in the world. Um, I think they wanted a guy that would uh, be an exhibitionist in the sprint car. So, you know, me and uh, Dennis Moore, we got to do the, you know, <laughs> hey, do donuts, do wheelies, do all that stuff after the race. And we, yeah. we were able to do that, you know. And, and I think that that aspect of sprint car needs to come back a little bit where people can see the true power of one of these race cars and what the potential they can actually do with them. Bottle of cab sav for you to take with you, but I have to ask, if you could spend time sharing a bottle of wine with anyone of your choosing, who would it be? Oh, that's hard to say. That's almost a trick question. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's it's one of those things, I, I'm, I've never really been a wine drinker, but I will, uh, I'd probably have to say probably with uh, my fiance back home. She's, she's a sweetheart. We. We both enjoy life uh, yeah. to the fullest. Um, she, I think, is she pushed me into coming here more than I wanted to at this point in time. But yeah. it was, uh, you know, sh we missed our anniversary, and I'd love to do that, make it up to her with a glass of wine and a nice meal. You know, a nice big thick steak back home. Beautiful. <laughs> well, it's great to have a chat. I'm really trying very hard not to push you in the pool. I won't because you're not going to do that to me either, right? Oh, uh, you never know. <laughs> if you push, I pull. So you come in too. But no, it's. Uh, it's definitely, it's been an opportunity for you guys to come and, uh, you know, talk to me. I yeah. try to smile every night and <laughs> at least have fun with the camera. So that's, uh, you know, if you ever need something stupid, I'll put my nose on camera. <laughs> you heard it here first. It's great to talk to you, Tim, and all the best for the rest of the World Series Sprint Car season. Thank you very much. Time now for the last chance qualifier. Your B main here at Sydney Speedway, thanks to NZ and Hog's Breath Cafe. Wow. Gary Brazier on pole, missed the initial transfer to the A's. Now got to go the long way about it. He's in the Rocket 21, right alongside Jamie Veal in the active power steering at number six. Away we go, Ferguson and Pesca. Also watching American Wayne Johnson, Blingy Muir in the 36, Trevor Green. Oh, trouble here! Whoa, Sammy Walsh, almost upside down the rocket car. The two rocket cars there tonight look great, but we see Gary Brazier out in front, one of the biggest names in Australian sprint car racing. The all-important B-Main here, the top six transfer through to the feature, and we've got a car off over in turn three and four. Yeah, you see, that's a really fast part of the racetrack there as well. There's the incident right then. In fact, it's Cody Kinzer, and Cody is the son of Kelly Kinzer, Back in the day, you might remember the old JPS four-car Kinzer team that came to Australia, Jack, where there was Steve, Randy, Mark, and Kelly Kinzer. 
Well, that's Kelly Kinzer's son, Cody, out of Bloomington in Indiana, driving the Wollongong number 42 car owned by Gary Rook. So you can see Cody about to get a restart, which is the good news. Only six cars will go through to tonight's A main from the B main. Just waiting on the recovery vehicles to get Cody out of the way. Away he goes, very exciting young man, wants to be a full-time driver, very handy about his home track in Bloomington. As we see Eddie Lumbar, man who does a lot of traveling out of Daniloquin, there is James Thompson in the 22, and Sean Bradford, we know he wants to get through. Yeah, Bradford really needs to get through to the A-Main to get some championship points for that World Series points tally. Restart now, and it's Gary Brazier at the front. We see great Trevor Green there in the out of Natrad car. He's bit down the order as well. A Pesca, someone who's made a lot of A-Mains early in this championship, really needs to get through and get some more points for his championship tally. Watch out for Ian Madsen as well, Jack. Remember he had dramas, he went upside down, had the car damaged, has had to come back out there. Look at Pesca running the cushion like a boss. He's never been to this place before and isn't he settling in well? And the Gawler Farm Machinery, number 27. How good is this kid? Yeah, he's awesome. Really been a great talent so far this year. Come into a lot of tracks that he needs to learn. And that's one massive thing about the top level of motorsport. You need to have experience on the racetracks. It's the same in Speedway as it is in, in Bitumen. And he's really shown now a oh. bit more experience over the backside of the cushion. But he'll be one to watch in the future. Wait there with uh, Warren Ferguson, the Fruit Wheels, Daco Glaze, number 32, a very handy speed car driver back in the day around this circuit as well. Back to the main straight, that's Veal in front of him. Jamie is from Warnable, lives not very far at all from the actual racetrack itself and running up in Sydney this year, I think's doing good running the weekly competition. Brazier, as you would expect, Jack, laying the smack down. Yeah, he's awesome to watch, Garrett Brazier. Local around here at Sydney Speedway, does a great job in that rocket machine. The car looks fast, he looks fast. And he'll be one to watch here. And don't forget, too, what he's doing at the moment. Running down the bottom, I think he's chasing the moisture, just trying to get some sort of R&D so he knows where to run the car in the A. Madsen is coming on. Oh, Sean Bradford. Costly mistake then. Cross got him and so did Madsen. You don't see him that crossed up with not spinning around too often, Wade. Great job from Bradford to keep that going. He really wants to get through the transfer. As we see, Brazier doing a solid job out in front. And as you say, learning a little bit about the track. Hopefully, if he gets through to the A main, he can carry that through and advance from the rear of the field in that race. Trevor Green on the bottom. He likes to run it down there. Very shrewd, very crafty as the South Aussie veteran. Running hard again with Warren Ferguson, who's upstairs where Fonzie lives, as Bobby Gerald used to say in the United States of America. One of the best commentators out of the States right there. Still wheel to wheel these two. They would have done this a lot over the years at Sydney Speedway as Brazier continues to rocket away, if you'll pardon the expression, in that Graham Cowan owned number 21. Doing a great job. Starting to catch up now on some lap traffic. He'll need to navigate his way through smoothly to make sure he doesn't damage the car and doesn't let anyone catch up behind and just press on and win this race. Budget race at Grant Tunks. Man, he's done a lot of laps around this. Between he and his dad, Bob, they've invested an enormous amount into the sport of sprint car racing, not only in New South Wales, but right across Australia. Ian Madsen, who drives for Barry and Vivian Lewis in the number 11 coming up on American Wayne Johnson who's born in Oklahoma but lives at Knoxville as you do the home of sprint car racing. Yeah, it's so cool to have the Americans part of this championship. Knoxville is an awesome place to be for sprint car racing. It's almost like the Le Mans, the Bathurst, all the world famous places and that's where Knoxville fits into the category for Speedway. Watching Brage, he can't get by Grant Tunks. Tunks, he's got some good car speed out of that largely unsponsored number 54. So we see Wayne Johnson running on the cush, Madsen through the middle and Damien Abbott doing a good job as the rabbit. Damien Abbott in the Aussie forklift repairs number 16. We're into the last lap. It's all Gary Brazier advancing where he will start from position 15 in tonight's A main jack. Yeah, as he comes around the last corner now, just behind a couple of lap traffic guys, he's got through to take the win. Great job from Gary Brazier. He was a class of the field there with Jamie Veal in second, David Blingymuir in third, Trevor Green in fourth, and Daniel Pesca making it through to yet another A main. Well, this is a rare sight in between a B and an A main. Making the cars, our six transferees, do a quick service out here on the racetrack. Dan Pesca, the Gawler Farm Machinery car. Well, they're going through to this A main. It's his first time at this track. Very impressive. Fuel and tyres only for Pesca, and he's ready to go. Dan, not a bad uh, effort. First time here in Sydney, and well, you've gone through to an A main. Yeah, no, it's been great. The track's awesome here, and um, something I adapt to pretty quickly. And, um, you know, we've made it in the A main. It's all good. Now, it does suit your style, doesn't it? Because you like to put it towards the top. Yeah, I just like the, um, the fast flying tracks and none of this stop start stuff. But, um, you know, it's just worked. It's just been good all weekend here. Now, I saw that you were running the top the whole B main there, but it 
was starting to maybe be a bit quicker down below because I saw Trev get underneath you. Yeah, um, the, the, the top is starting to, um, you know, dust off and the cushion's getting way too big to run. Um, I haven't tried down the bottom yet, but um, these first couple laps I've got a good chance to and see how the car goes. All right, starting near the rear, but good luck, man. Thanks very much. Daniel Pesca continuing to learn. Every time he goes out there, you just see him get quicker and quicker. And running at a place like Jack said earlier, without a wall to lean up against, sometimes can be very, very difficult to pick up. Ian Madsen, devastated not to make the transfer. The guy is a gassed up racer. He'll be very disappointed. Ian Madsen on an absolute charge in that B main. I guess that last caution really helped you out. Yeah, it did. I, I, I didn't know where we were. I didn't think we were going to make it. And then the yellow come out and I thought we had a hope. And then uh, just kind of all opened up on the top there and got through and uh, to see if I can make up for my for being an idiot in the heat race and spinning out. And uh, we'll just try and get this up the front and uh, put on a show. It's one of those tracks and you've had such good success here where you can just throw it to the top. What's that like? Uh, it's awesome. They haven't had a track like this for quite some time. So it's, uh, it's cool to get something different and um, kind of get wide open again. All right, well, Ian Madsen, uh, we saw you doing your uh, tear off, so get back to that, buddy, because you're going to be off the back Thanks, of our A main. This is another guy that we want to find in here, though, because he's starting off the front of the A main. It's uh, Jason Johnson off the front against Jason Sides, and that's got a bit of a ring to it, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, Jason's a pretty good friend of mine back in the States, and, um, you know, he's a, definitely a tough challenger. So to, to come all the way around the world and be starting side by side with Jason uh, says a lot. Now, this is only a preliminary, I mean, but obviously some big points still up for grabs, and in the scheme of things, it's an important race. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you obviously always want to win the bigger races, but it really doesn't matter. when, uh, when Once you put the helmet on and you close the visor, it's, it's just another race, and you're out to win them. It doesn't matter if it's a preliminary night or a final night, but, um, you know, the HM guy's been doing a good job all night long, and uh, gave me a great race car, so we try to make the most of it here come A-Main. All right, good luck. Thank you. Yeah, he's fired up and looking good as Jason Johnson. Don't you go away, folks, when we come back. We let him loose for 30 laps around Sydney Speedway. Hold on tight. Welcome back to Sydney Speedway. It's the NZ World Series Sprintcast presented by Hogs Breath Cafe. Just see Shane Stewart just limbering up a bit inside the cockpit, Jack Perkins. Yeah, getting ready now for the all-important 30-lap A main. It's a long race for the drivers. See Shane Stewart in that monster car. They've had a difficult start to the year World Series, but they're really looking to make amends here tonight. Yeah, well, they've got good consistency and they've got their car speed back now, so... He's certainly a threat. There is Jason Johnson in the white and blue 47 and Sydney's Roddy Bell Bowen right alongside him in that number seven. Kind of the stealth bomber, the seven. No real sponsorship exposure on it. His brother Toby Bell Bowen carries the Spies Hecker and Hog's Breath Cafe branding on it. Johnson fires up. He had his race win pinched off him by Jason Sides last night. If he's still smarting about that, I would think. Yeah, it was a difficult one. Jason Johnson and Jason Sides definitely looked to be the class of the field last night in the preliminary, I mean. Uh, Jason Johnson was leading to the last corner last lap and ran a bit high on the cushion. As we have a look now at the A-Main starting group, Jason Johnson will start off pole. Jason Sides, the two Americans off the front row. Look at Gary Brazier back in P16. Robbie in position 13. Luke Dillon in 11. Tim Cading in 14. It's brutal, this format, if you don't get it right. Darren Pittman there too, World of Outlaw star, who's going to race with Casey Kane this year. Big opportunity. And of course, the man who won World Series Sprint Cars 10 years ago, driving for Titan Racing. Hard to believe it's been 10 years, JP. <laughs> it's a long time in sprint cars, but look, we've got a lot of good drivers here, a lot of experienced guys. We see James McFadden in the number one, a little bit further down than where he would like to be, but look, he's quashing rumours that he's no good at Sydney Speedway. He'll be there fighting tonight, that's for sure. Well, he doesn't do a whole lot of racing at the place, Jack. That's the big thing. He tends to spend a lot of time racing in Queensland, of course, with World Series of Victoria and across South Australia and WA, so he really doesn't have a chance to do much racing in Sydney. Fans going off. No chance here for a four wide tonight. Got to get the show on, get the racing run. So the boys still getting plenty of fan support as they roll up on the double conga line of menace before our 30. 
This is a cool track here at Sydney Speedway. Looking forward to watching how the track shapes up for the 30 laps of racing. We saw last night in the preliminary, both the bottom and the top are working well. Let's see what it produces tonight. We just saw the M4 motorway, the traffic on the M4 motorway. They used to give a couple of drivers $2 to put on their cockpit in case they flipped out of the place and landed up at the toll gates. Set to go. Robbie Farr in the number seven. Can he come back from last night's disappointment? Johnson alongside sides and Johnson gets the better of the launch. Fat Tattnall got a pretty good launch as well. He's up to P3. McFadden runs high. Matt Smith going with him. Roddy Belbon in the middle. She's busy, Jack. It is. It is really busy. Good clean start though. We see a lot of guys searching for grip already. We watched Jason Johnson duck to the inside and we saw sides straight up to the cushion as we see James McFadden. He's right up high on that cushion. Somebody doesn't look overly comfortable tonight is Matt Smith right there. Whoa, that was close. But I was going to say Stephen Lyons. We really haven't seen that blistering car speed from Lyons. He's McFadden runs over the cushion and lost several positions there. We touched on this earlier in the night. What happens at Sydney Speedway here? It's one of the tracks where the walls aren't right on the edge of the, of the track and you can run wide as James McFadden did and get away with it. Any other track in World Series and you're in the fence. Robbie Farr has a load of experience around this place in speed cars and sprint cars. McFadden has spun. James McFadden spins and David Blingy Muir in trouble here as well. Looks like he's got some steering issues in that number 36 Titan Garages car. Now, what has happened with McFadden in the Australia One totally workwear entry? You can see how much rain they've had over the weekend and moisture. Here's a look at the e injectorsonline.com replay. That's why. Muir made contact with him. Yeah, Muir's got up the inside there and they've tagged and he's spun James McFadden around and that's what's caused that damage to Muir's 36 machine. Very rare that you'll see James McFadden make a mistake like that. Wouldn't surprise me if McFadden has some sort of damage on that left rear corner. Unfortunately for Blingy Muir, he's out and won't take part in the restart. McFadden too will have to go to the rear of the field here. So that's a brutal hit for James. We talked earlier about the fact he started further back than he wanted to. Now he's at the very back of the bus, Jack. Yeah, he is, and that's a bit of a shame. But look, he's a champion. We've seen him come from the rear in a few other races this year. Let's see what he can do. The officials there just pushing the car, ready to get going to refire. And hopefully we'll be making a restart very shortly. So not long away from forming the backup for this restart situation. It's a nice, big, wide circuit, Sydney Speedway. Recently celebrated its 1,000th race meeting, Jack. It's been around a long time. Yeah, that's a pretty cool stat to have that many races at this track. It's pretty famous here in Australia. We used to have NASCAR drivers Tony Stewart, Casey Kane, a lot of guys come out here and race. Really cool for the fans to be racing so close to Sydney. And it's such a great racetrack, provides great racing, and hopefully tonight's feature is exactly the same. 27 laps still on the board to run. We see Ben Atkinson there in the number two car as the Titan Garages Avenue, number 36 of Blingy Muir, goes off the circuit. You see Robbie Farr just relaxing a bit. The guys often, too, pull down the belts rolling around the restart to just make sure that you are like a vice-like grip inside those belts. It's no different to safety car periods in, in V8 supercar racing. You always tighten up your belts. You make sure you're comfortable, ready to go. You can sometimes relax the muscles, get ready for what will be an intense bout of motor racing. Waiting to get back into it right now. You're watching the NZ World Series Sprint Cars presented by Hogs Breath Cafe from Sydney Speedway. The boys finally get a week off from World Series competition after this, but they head to the Warnable Classic, the King's Challenge, the President's Cup. So really, it's only World Series, the format they get a rest from. We're back underway. Restart time right now. Your injectorsonline.com restart. Phil Jordison getting some cool shots down there as we go on board with Brooke Tatnall. Hey, this is a pretty cool shot. Looking back at the left rear, and you can see the arm work from Brooke. He's busy working that machine around this track. And you can see the car behind Shane Stewart in that Monster Energy machine. What a great opportunity given to him by Steve Court, the Albion Park Rail near Wollongong race are giving him this beautiful KPC to wield around here. We're just seeing Robbie Farr alongside Tim Kading. A couple of guys that'll give no inch there. This is elbows out stuff. Great to watch a couple of professionals at work. We see Robbie Farr oh. on the high side and a bit of contact there between the two cars. This is great racing. Like I said, mate, neither one of them are going to give up a corner. Nothing asked, nothing given. Stretching out in front is Jason Johnson from Sides, from Tattnall, Shane Stewart, Kyle Hurst and Darren Pittman. Have a look at that. Every driver on that screen in the top six lives in a America. One of them is Sydney-born and Aussie-proud, but they're all based in America. 
It just shows how big sprint car racing is in America. You need to be over there to further your careers, and it's great to have them back here in Australia racing in our summer. Wow, Robbie Farr just got Trevor Green then and picked up Tim Kading. Farr is on a mission. The East Coast Pipeline number seven. Kading comes back at him. This is what you love about sprint cars. At least two lines. We had three or four different passes in one lap, Jack. Yeah, this is awesome racing. Robbie Farr, his machine looks really racy as we look at Shane Stewart there in that monster car. And back to Robbie Farr now. He's working really hard in that race car. He's cleared that car, Tim Kading, and he's doing a great job. Having said that, remember me? Here comes TK back on the inside now. He's picking up the moisture on the bottom. Farry has to go out wider. Great racing here from Sydney, and Kading is back now. Yes, baby. This is what I love about sprint cars right here. Have a look how many times the boys are mixing it up. These guys are racing real hard as we see Steve Lyons there in that number three machine. He'll be looking forward to trying to get up there a bit further, not having the best night he's had tonight. Brooke Tatnell and Shane Stewart now battling for a podium position. This is for third spot. Daniel Pesker on the outside. James McFadden back on the inside. Well, it's really starting to heat up now. This podium spot, it is on for young and old. Coming up after the break, there's more as we wrap up the World Series Sprint Cars at Sydney Speedway. World Series Sprint Cars, presented by Hogs Bread Cafe at Sydney Speedway. You're riding on board, so hold on tight with Brooke Tatnell and American Shane Stewart giving him plenty. Brooke having to go down the bottom here. There's a lot more moisture. That's what's working, gives you all the traction. Great shot here as we're looking back at that left rear on Brooke Tatnell's car. He's racing really hard with Shane Stewart in the Monster Energy car. As we look back now, the 47 of Jason Johnson. He's racing hard for the lead with American Jason Sides. And these two were our two class of the field in the prelim night. As we see Jason Johnson Whoa. caught up behind a bit of lap traffic. That was close. Here's another American right there and another one behind him. Darren Pittman and Kyle Hurst. Oh, Sides is your leader again! Well, he's gone by a lot earlier this time on Jason Johnson. Brooke Tatnell still in third, but sides double down, looking to go back to back. And that very rarely happens. Of course, we did see last weekend, having said that, James McFadden do it on the prelim night and the 50 lapper. And now sides trying to repeat the dose to Jason Johnson. Yeah, this is really cool watching these Americans race. We saw Jason Johnson just get tripped up by a little lap traffic and it enabled Jason Sites to blow around the outside and get to the lead. Look now, Shane Stewart. This is a massive battle with Brooke Tatnell for that final podium spot. Tell you what, Gary Brazier has been busy as well. He charged. Remember, he came from position 15, had to win the B main to get into the event. He's now up at about a top six or seven position. So Braz starting to look very handy indeed. We stay on board with Brooke. Watching Stewart now, trying to get to the bottom. Brook goes to the cushion. I think the monster car got him. Yeah, great move by Shane Stewart. Up the inside, did a great pass in. Nice and clean move, and he's through to the next spot. There is your second place car, Jason Johnson. In the number 47, your leader then, the seven, just going through of Jason's sides. So from Tennessee and Louisiana, then Oklahoma. They're not exactly metropolitan hotspots. If you're going to travel to the States as a tourist, you probably wouldn't go to those spots except for maybe Memphis to see Graceland. But that's the hotbed of sprint car racing through the Midwest and down the South. A lot of good races come out of there. They do. And that's what Speedway Racing is all about. It's very big in the rural industries, especially here in Australia. Some of our best tracks aren't in capital cities like Warrnambool. Mount Gambia, Kalgoorlie, it's exactly the same in America. The big races happen just out of the main cities. Darren Pittman there also from Oklahoma. Brooke Tatnell, he's born in Sydney, though he lives in Minnesota with his wife Amy and their two children. It's great to see him back here on a limited schedule in Australia, celebrating 25 years of racing. He was never going to miss at least some opportunities to have a skid this year. McFadden. Desperate to move up the order a little further. He's back, well back, further than he would like to be. He got tagged by Blingy Muir. He had to go to the rear, and he's really struggled to get back into the top ten. He has us now the six laps to run. We're looking at Shane Stewart battling Darren Pittman. He's done a great job charging through the field now. Look out, he's just got a narrow groove to work with on the bottom, and he squeezes through beautifully. Now he comes after Stewart. They're both from Oklahoma. These days, more of an Indiana base for them, but they are Sooners from the OK State. And well done, Pittman. You see Stewart go back to the bottom. 
See, how can you not love sprint car racing? This is cool. They're running like two wide, one at the bottom, one up top, crossing over, switching back. It's all happening here. But Pittman's been able to clear Shane Shute and he's into the third position. Isn't it amazing how you can see a guy sit behind someone until all of a sudden their setup comes on, they go by it, and then they don't just go by it, they drive away. Stewart now under pressure from Brooke Tatnell, who's now starting to come back. You really have to avoid the middle of the racetrack as we go on board Robbie Farr here. Charging very hard, trying to get his way through. That's actually up on top of the roll cage, looking across the left rear. It's a great shot as we see him just trip over the back of the cushion, exiting turn three. And now he's copping a little bit of pressure, but he'll be looking forward to finishing this race. Brooke Tatnell, I think it was, just, oh, well, it was Cading, in fact. I look back and saw the Quickie Motorsport car, I'm still having trouble getting used to Tim Cading behind the wheel. There is Brooke in that number nine car. And Brazier, geez, Gary Brazier, what a drive from him. He came from position 15, and he's on a mission now. Coming after Brooke and trying to get a top five. Absolutely. Whenever you come from the B main and you make it through to the top five or six in the A main, you're doing well. And he's just blown around the top of Brooke Tatnell in that machine. And what a great job that was by Gary Brazier. One lap to go for this man on screen from Memphis, Tennessee. Jason Sides, the double down number seven, will do the job. Superb drive. The East Coast Logistics sign on the top. Dave Horrell from Horrell Motorsport getting right behind him. And well done. That English race engine, Scotty Inglis, has given him an absolute monster engine. And it's working beautifully. Well done, Sides. Back to back. That's a tremendous effort. Yeah, great job from the two Jasons. They've been a class act here at Sydney Speedway. Sides coming through with a victory in both, and Johnson finishing second in both nights. So great effort from both the Americans. The difference is that these guys race for a living. They race 70, 80, 90 times a year. They come down to Australia and run as well. Good effort for Sides. He heads straight to victory lane. His brother Paul is here with him as well. A great character. That's for the Sides brothers. Good fun. Look at him absolutely pumped up. Doesn't matter if it's in Australia or America, they love winning. That's cool to watch. It's great to see drivers excited when they win a race. And to win a feature race here in the World Series is no fair effort. So great job there from Jason Sides. Feature race winner. Look at that. The big double thumbs up. The checkered flag there as well. And Sides does the job two nights in a row here at Sydney Speedway. It's the last time we'll see him race with World Series. The schedule heads across to Adelaide, then over to the west, and Sides will head back to America and prepare for Florida with the World of Outlaw schedule over there. So nice work from that man. Well done to Johnson, as you said. Well done, Darren Pittman, rounding out the top three. So superb job for the Americans, and just look at that. Happy, happy man. There's his brother, Paul. Chad Nalon looking to stand by and have a yarn with him in just a moment. And Scotty Mayles, very happy as well. This team on a real roll. Let's get into Chad Nalon with our winner, Jason Sides. Well, they call him Double Downs, but this is double your wins. Jason Sides doing up his ponytail as cool as ever. And man, you've come all the way to Australia and I've got a present for you. It's a lovely trophy from the team at NZ. And a nice cold bottle of water from our friends at Illuminate Industry, because I know you got your hands hot on that one. Whew, you did it a little easier than you did last night, huh? I'm not real sure about that. Because he was good, he had a good pace, but we were a little tight early and uh, just there when the fuel kind of burned off and everything, we got going good and uh, you know, he, luckily we got to some traffic and slowed him up a little bit and we just had a good run. There was throwing some mud out in the middle of the track where we could just carry some momentum around and uh, that's where we, where we got him and uh, you know, just to the, thank God that we got him. You head home on Old American 1, 2, 3, that's pretty special too. He really is. Uh, you know, last night, who was third then? Uh, Pittman got there. Pittman was third, so yeah. Uh, just another American sweep for us, so that's great. You know, we just, I know Darren's been, uh, he just got here, so uh, he had a good night. Congratulations, mate. Thanks, guys. Yeah, well done, that man, Jason Sides. Darren Pittman was solid tonight, driving the 42 Ever Ready Technologies entry. The car spanned by his good mate and former World of Outlaws crew chief, Glenno Inglis from Queensland, together with Scotty Inglis with that motor. So they really had a good Inglis combination right there. Pittman solid for his third place here tonight at Sydney, driving the April family-owned number 42. Here's Chad with him now. The only American to ever win the NZ World Series, but he's on the podium again here as well in Sydney. Well done, mate. Thanks. Yeah, just a great team effort. Uh, really didn't time trial really well last night. Uh, first time in the car and good field of cars and just were off a little bit and kind of put us in a hole. But uh, uh, just got to thank Dave April and, and the whole April race team, Glenno, Steve, uh, Brent. They've just done a great job and, and 
really a good pleasure to come over here and run for them on such a short trip. And uh, got great equipment, you know. Uh, gives us good momentum going into uh, the next week and uh, going into the Classic because uh, uh, that's our main focus and uh, we've got a good race car. Talk us through these passes at the end there. You got around Tattnall as well as Stewart. Yeah, car was excellent, you know, just kind of the same as last night. Didn't really go anywhere early in the race, just kind of held our own and then uh, really towards the last five to, to 15 laps really got going and uh, uh, was good on the bottom. Actually made the middle work uh, in both corners there pretty good and then was able to get by uh, Shane so, uh, and, and Brooke both. But those are good race cars, uh, good race car drivers, so uh, uh, we definitely earned it and happy with uh, third from where we started. Well done. Uh, it's good to have you back. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Well, Jason Johnson made his final appearance with us for NZ World Series Sprintcast tonight. He heads back home after the Warrnambool Classic the States to resume his racing program for the season ahead. A strong result for him, as Jack said, a pair of second placings. He prefer a pair of wins, but sometimes it's the way it rolls in sprint car racing. Here's Chad with JJ. Some serious consistency with this guy. Uh, it's just another podium, huh? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you think if we keep knocking the door down eventually we'll start winning a few, but... Yeah, the guys are doing a good job. Um, Give me great race cars, and anytime you're on the podium, you know you don't want to complain. But um, you know, to to be up front and lead as many laps and not win it, you know, it's just uh, it's disappointing, I guess, a little bit to run second. But you know, uh, Sides had a good car, and um, you know, he got around us. The key to these things is traffic, hey? Well, you know, it is to some extent, and I'm generally I'm really good at traffic, to be quite honest. And um, just when you got a loose race car, you kind of got to stay in the moisture, and you can't really search around a whole lot. And, I was committed to the bottom, and uh, you know I got shut off by a couple, a couple lap cars, and they didn't know I was there. And uh, you know, sides, you know, obviously went the opposite direction, and it worked out. Great job from Jason Johnson, second tonight. As we look at the championship tally, James McFadden's got a healthy margin over the rest of the competitors. Johnson running second, Shane Stewart in third. They're doing a great job now in the Monster Energy Monty Motorsports machine. Struggled early in the season, but finding some good form when it counts. Steve Lines in fourth, and Luke Dillon, who won our first two rounds of the season, he's dropped back to fifth. Tim Cading did an excellent job in a car that was just an absolute bear to drive. They bent the chassis in a crash, and it was pretty well a handful all night. Not for that guy. Jason Sides was unstoppable. We'll see you in Adelaide for the next round. On behalf of Jack Perkins, it's Wade Orange just saying, see you next time.